I'm an introvert at heart, and when I went to college, I was never the first to engage in any type of social or classroom situation. And even my friend group that I still have to this day, we kind of just stumbled upon each other in the dorms. Like they approached me, I forget exactly how it was. We were all awkward at the beginning. Uh, just getting to school and we're like, hey, you guys want to go walk to lunch or hang out? And then it slowly built into this. And don't even get me started about speaking in front of the class or going to networking meetups to meet new people. Those just turned me off in every single way. I wanted nothing to do with them. All I wanted to do was sit in my dorm, play video games and work on the side businesses that I was pursuing at the time. And this was before I realized that being introverted isn't about being antisocial. Being social is a skill, not a personality trait that can be improved, yet people hide behind their introverted identity to avoid the inevitable discomfort they are going to have to face if they want to see success in any domain of life. Like it doesn't make sense to write off uh, business or something else that requires some form of social interaction whether it be in business or just relationships or meeting new people, like thinking of yourself as an introvert in that way and thinking that like 50% of the population that is introverted just doesn't do those things, that is completely against the point. And so that was college, but now we're at the center of a new party, which is social media. And I tried to build a name for myself many times in the past. I started with a fitness YouTube channel, went on to create a digital art page on Instagram, even did some photography, a lot of photography, actually. If you go to the bottom, like scroll all the way to the bottom of my Instagram page, you can see what I'm talking about here. And then the next thing was building multiple agencies or just freelancing businesses and testing out different tactics for growing and selling on social media. And then that's when I stumbled across Twitter of all places. Seriously, nobody really uh, thought of Twitter back then. And I would argue that still most people don't now because I thought it was a place for like politics and half-baked memes. And the since the day I downloaded it in like 2011, I just remember vividly scrolling on Twitter, not seeing anything that I liked. And then I just deleted it, deleted the app from my phone for like 10 years. But one day when I decided to get back on Twitter, a tweet from Jose Rosado, great person, go follow him on Twitter, go follow him everywhere. A tweet of his popped up on my timeline and it was some form of like heavy hitting truth, like a harsh truth. And I love that stuff. That's the kind of content that I really like is like, Hey, stop being a little bitch and go do this shit. I'm pretty sure that that was Jose's thing at the time is like, stop being a little bitch. And so that resonated really well with me. And so I followed him and I realized that he wasn't just talking about self-improvement. He was talking about online business, which was what I was interested in too. So I was like, oh, this is a steal. This guy's talking about both self-improvement and online business. And then by following him, uh, more accounts got exposed to my feed, either from people that he retweeted or that I just came across in the replies, or you know how you find people on social media. It's kind of just uh, like the network effect. And before I knew it, I was drowning in high value money Twitter advice. And then on Twitter, I lurked without engaging or doing anything. That's the type of person I am. I just don't like engaging. I don't like commenting. I'm an introvert, right? I didn't want anything to do with it. So I just lurked for like six months until I finally realized, like it just hit me all at once. I'm like, all of these people are writing the same exact tweets that I could be writing. Like I enjoy this content because I could do the same thing. They're confirming my beliefs. And so why am I just sitting here consuming when I could be doing the same exact thing? Because they were clearly getting leads, followers, sales, they were growing and actually making an income doing it. And all it took, took was a little mindset shift or shift in perception to see from that lens of why am I not doing the same exact thing? I can do all of this. And so that alone, it, it sounds cliche, but that alone changed the direction of my life. So here is a graphic to illustrate that the digital world has no barriers. We can see this is the evolution of networking where 20 years ago, you need college network location, profession status in order to get opportunity today. All you really need is the internet. 
because in the past, the only way to the top was your network and your network was limited by your physical location or the college, the prestigious college that you went to and climbing your way up the ladder. Then introverts didn't stand a chance, especially me at that time. If I would have gone to college in the past, I would have been fucked. I would have been out of a job. I wouldn't have been doing anything because I wouldn't be social enough to actually make that happen. So in the past, you couldn't like we take this for granted. We don't actually sit and think about it. But you can DM a celebrity, and if your DM is good, like if you're a good persuasive writer, which is a skill, right? It's not like just nobody gets access to these celebrities. The the people you want to DM, there is a string of words that you can say that will get them to respond. And even in a like a freelancer or an agency owner, uh, their case in the past, you wouldn't be able to just DM a client, walk them through some kind of like strategized messaging to open them up to your service and then get them to pay you 2500 5000 10000 I know some people are even charging $60,000 for services through the DMs. Do you not see how fucking insane that is? Like most people would kill for $60,000. So if you can just upskill yourself a little bit for 3 to 6 months in order to be able to create a freelancing consulting coaching service from the start, start reaching out to people because the digital world has no barriers and then pull in an income for yourself by charging low, like 500 to a thousand, getting results, improving your skill stack, charging more, learning how to create a system that solves a specific problem within a specific niche and then charging even more to get more results. And then by that time, if you're growing an audience and you productize, like it's very clear what people should be doing. But th this is all modern. In the past, you had to go to school, you had to get good grades, you had to apply to a prestigious college, get accepted, and then do all of this fancy work to become like rise to the top of the ladder in whatever compartment or department of that education you wanted to go into. And then you had to be extroverted enough to actually form real connections with these people so that they would pass opportunities off to you rather than the next guy. And so in the past, people had to work their ass off in order to get the limited opportunities that were available. But now there's just an overabundance of opportunities and options that make people overwhelmed, uncertain. And so they flock to the secure career systems, you could call them, that have been developed over time, that the schools are tightly closed with. And so think about it. The, the person that you read just now in the comments, they need a website and you could fulfill that service. And the tweet that you just scrolled by, that guy needs a video editor. And the person on some subreddit, they want to learn how to be happy. They have a problem in their life. They're not sure how to solve it. And maybe you can come in and help them. The internet gives you indirect access to the 4.9 billion people that are on it. And all it takes is one piece of content, right? This is all media. This is all content where it takes one piece of content for someone to like just, it'll just land somewhere, right? Let's say it was a good piece of content. Someone retweeted it. Then a big account saw it. They retweeted it. And then another huge account saw it. It got put on a, a meme page. Maybe it got mentioned in the news. This is like way overly optimal case, but this can happen to anyone, right? It's just a matter of learning how to write a good piece of media and then having it spread to whatever part of the internet you could get to and then people know your name people start to know what you do and then if you attract them to your audience and you have content going for you then you nurture them they get to know you more and then if you eventually have a product or service that you can offer them in order to pull in an income so networking even though i don't like that word networking just i, I like making friends is a better way to put it. But networking is the pillar of my success. Jose Rosado was the first person that I reached out to from my memory. I ended up signing on to his coaching program, which was a great program. This was like three years ago. And the cool thing is about this is that both Jose and I were in like slightly different niches, kind of. We talk about some same things. We talk about some different things. But that just goes to show that like people can be unique, even if we're in very similar domains. And so another example is Joey Justice. If you're in Modern Mastery, you know who Joey is. If you're on Twitter, you probably know who Joey is. But we hit it off like way back when, when we first both started on Twitter. And now I'm flying out to see him in early March. I'm, I've seen him multiple times. He's a very good friend of mine. And it's just crazy what happens when you start actually putting yourself out there. And we helped each other with our services at the start. I helped him get his, I like offered my services to him for free in order for him to get a testimonial from me and to just make his better. And he offered coaching to me. So it's like vice versa. That's kind of 
how it works in the creator economy is you just make friends, you help each other, and then you use those strategies to help others. And even last year, I moved to Texas with Dakota Robertson and JK Molina that I met on Twitter. And I've also met great people like Justin Welsh, Sahil Bloom, Dickie Bush. I had a dinner with Dickie Bush like a few weeks ago. I've talked with others. It's just genuinely insane what kind of like-minded people that are ambitious in life and achieving good things you can find on the internet if you actually look for them because most people don't approach social media with this mindset they approach social media with the mindset of i want to be educated and entertained they it doesn't even cross their mind that they could reach out to this person and become friends with them i'm talking about like people that are within a similar follower range as them and then grow together and offer their value in front of potentially 4.9 billion people on the internet. So if you're in this creator game or this one person business game, if you're not on social media, you've already lost. This is kind of a given. I don't care if it's like paid ads or building a personal brand in general. I recommend building a personal brand, but if you're not on social media at all, I don't know what you're doing. And then go and talk to any creator or one person business owner that you know and ask them what the most important part of their success is. And they're going to tell you it's networking. If they don't, I don't know what to tell you. So when you don't have an audience, which everyone does not have an audience at the start, DMs are how you get in front of people and you start making connections. Freelancers understand this well for landing clients, but the average person that is just trying to grow on social media, they don't see the importance of it. And so that's what this video is for, because I've seen I've seen people land job offers, right? This isn't only for people that are uh, trying to start a business. This is for anyone that is looking to advance their career. I've seen people with tweets that go viral when they have very low followers simply because they are friends with someone that has a lot of followers and they shared it. And so people usually fall into two camps here. First is that they don't understand the sheer power and network effect of DMing people on a consistent basis. The second is that they don't understand that you can get large accounts to share your post if you are strategic enough. So this is clearly about how to send a good DM but most people suck <laughs> at sending DMs or they don't know how to do it. So I want to preface with this, like no shade on you if you've done this before, but from here on out, never, ever, 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 ever fucking ever send a DM that starts with, starts and ends with, hi or hey, how are you? Can you follow me back? A straight sales pitch with no prior connection, a long block of text that takes too much time to read, especially if the sentences aren't spaced out. You have to approach DMs tactically, especially if you're reaching out to big accounts that get 10 plus DMs an hour. I would say that I get 10 plus DMs on almost every single platform, every single hour. And so you have to understand that like I'm not, one, I just do not have the physical capability of replying to all of those DMs, especially because it's not just one DM back. It's usually a question and then I answer and then the DMs compound. So if I start answering people, the number goes from 10 plus DMs to like 40 plus DMs every single hour. So you have to keep in mind that people with a large following that you're trying to get in front of, they're just skimming through DMs to see if they're missing anything important to the point where it's like an email subject line or a, a hook for a piece of content or a headline for an article. You have to capture attention with what they can see and you have to be strategic about what you're going to say. So let's dive into the seven steps to non-needy networking. This started out as a guide in digital economics, and then it got repurposed into two hour writer to help people get eyes on their writing. And then I put it in modern mastery. It's just a very important process to understand. This is foundational for anyone trying to grow a business or just improve their career or just get online. And so the main purpose of this really, when we peel it all back is to get your name in front of people's eyes and in their mouths because even freelancers struggle with thinking that they're just in this constant cycle of i need to reach out to this guy and then the conversation ends if they never respond no if you reach out to 100 people and you were kind and you had value to offer and you walk through the process that we're going to go through then they're even if they can't like help you with anything they're going to have you top of mind for the next person that comes to them and asks if they know anyone that can help with web design, email marketing, uh, fitness, whatever it may be. So the first step is to find somebody that you want to DM. You want to DM. And this isn't exclusive to just making connections. This is crucial for paid work as well. So many freelancers choose niches that they don't give a shit about. And then they're, entire, they're, they're just put themselves in this like 
fucking terrible place where they hate reaching out to people because they hate the people that they're reaching out to. They hate working with the people, so they hate the work that they're doing for the people, and then they just build themselves into an, another miserable 9 to 5. So this is a crucial step, is just to reach out to people that you actually want to connect with. So reach out to people that you are inspired by or you would want to work with you would want to strategize with or you see potential for mutual benefit. And when you're just starting out, you kind of have to work your way up the ladder, right? Because there's so many different moving pieces with all of this. It's impossible to explain in one video. But just one example, if if I have zero followers and I'm reaching out to someone with 100,000 and by chance they open my DM and then they look at my profile, there's like, yes, this is a bit superficial, but there's there's not really anything you can offer me. I see zero followers and I think, Okay, we're in this social media game. This guy hasn't put in any time at all. How is he going to help me? And of course, there's a lot more nuance to that. And so once you have an audience and leverage, you can really reach out to anyone you want. If you have 100,000 to a million followers, you have a lot more social proof because that shows that you've been in the game for a while, that you're offering some form of value that is just like a badge saying that like, hey, I've stuck this out for a bit and I've actually proven myself. And so when I reach out to someone and I have like a million followers, I'll get a response from almost anyone. And so you're probably asking, where do I find people to DM? Well, I'm assuming that you follow people that you either want to connect with or can help you grow or that you want to work with, right? You follow at least one of those people. So from that one person, go and look at their following list right? This is probably zero to a thousand people that they follow. Look through that list, spend some time going through the accounts, find like-minded accounts, or just find people that you'd want to connect with, follow them, start replying to them, engage with them, and then eventually walk through this process of DMing them. So the first thing that you send is an inspired compliment. This is step two. So you can find a piece of their content, work, or just something that they've done that truly inspires you or that you like, or it, it gave you an insight that you want to share with them. And then you send that to them. So let's say it's like a tweet that I resonated with, and I'm going to send that person the tweet and be like, hey man, explain what I liked about it, and then go from there. And so people love praise, and there's this thing called the law of reciprocity, where if you give value to someone else, and praise is a form of value, then they feel obligated to give it in return. So let's let's pretend that I wrote a tweet on managing emotions. This is what I would say. What's up, Dan? This tweet hit me hard. I've been going through it the past couple of days and this instantly gave me some relief. Thank you. And then I add the link to the post they liked. Simple as that. Step number three is to show genuine interest in them. So if they don't respond from this, you can just reach out again in the same manner. Send them something that you liked and keep doing that until they respond. And so showing interest is communication 101. Showing interest makes you interesting. So ask them about their goals, what they're building, what they do for work. This gives you the opportunity to give value even if you don't have the value to give right now. So let's assume that they just respond with the generic thank you so much. And that was to the last message. And now you can go to their profile, find what they're working on or just a goal that they have and try to assume it. So if you find what they're working on, you can say something like, what are your next plans for modern mastery? It's been crazy seeing it grow. I'm curious what you've got in store. If you can't find what they're working on, do you have anything that you're building right now? With that kind of content, you must have something bigger in the works. So step number four is to lead with value. This is the part that trips most people up because most people don't think they have value to give. So your first options are to see where you can help, send actionable tips if you personally have them, or you can send resources, videos, articles, or anything that may help with them building what they're building in accordance with their goal. And so if you have to ask more questions in order to get more specific on what they're building so that you can actually help them with that, then do so, ask more questions in between these. So if you have no value to give, you can send a resource that can help them with their goals, connect them with someone else in your network, just continue having a good conversation and showing interest, show that you're interested in helping them. So step number five is to get on a call to make a deeper connection. So this part is optional, but highly recommended. You don't have to get on a call with someone, but I would practice it, right? Especially if you're an introvert, it helps a lot to be able to get on a Zoom call and just talk with someone. Because making that face-to-face -face connection is priceless, right? Especially on the internet where nobody really knows your mannerisms. They don't know how you talk outside of like a scripted reel or post. And it just helps to mesh on that personal level. And so when I was starting out, I was getting on Zoom calls left and right, even if I didn't feel like it. I remember being so anxious one time when I was DMing someone with like 50,000 followers. I was just like, oh my God, this guy, 
like it, it's crazy. I can't believe I'm even getting on a call with him. And then you realize that every single person behind a high following count is human too. They're just like you. And so people think that getting on a Zoom call is weird because one, they haven't done it. And it's, it's a lot more normal than you think if you just ask someone, hey, you want to get on a call and like I can help out with what you're building or we can just talk shop and have a good time. And so it also helps to just take the conversation to somewhere like Telegram or WhatsApp where you can send them uh, like a voice message, right? You can make it more personal. And now I mentioned WhatsApp. There's people in the replies of these YouTube videos. I'm going to get you one day, motherfucker. But there's like these scammers that have their name as like WhatsApp and then a number and they have my profile picture. It's so weird. Like, it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you guys like click on that. You're an idiot. Don't click on those things. So step number six is to follow up with value, right? You've waited some time. You've gotten on a call with them. Maybe there's some space between the messages. The, the conversation fizzled out, but it helps to strengthen that or just like keep that connection going. Oh my God, my tax guy's calling me. Hey, how are you, man? Yeah, sounds good, man. I, I really appreciate it. So when you're following up with value, you want to remember their goals, right? You want to have their goals top of mind. So when you come across something or you find something interesting, just as you're consuming content or you're reading books or you're watching YouTube videos or you're building stuff out, then you can think to send it to them in order to just continue providing value to them. I've done this before with like content systems that I built out or like notion templates that I've built out. And if I feel like it'll benefit one of my friends and my network, then I'm going to send it to them and just be like, Hey man, I built this out. Maybe it'll help with X, Y, Z. And so if you want like a hard script to practice, I don't recommend like copy pasting any of these, just use your own voice. But if I were to give a script, it would just be, I remember you telling me about your plans for their project or goal. I found this today and thought you'd find it helpful. So it could be a YouTube video or it could be really anything that you just feel like they would benefit from. So the last step, step number seven is to follow up with an ask. Notice how we provided value. We've followed up with value. All of this is variable, right? You don't have to do it exactly in this order. These are kind of just the principles. And if you study influence or persuasion, you'll understand this a lot more. So I'd recommend like the book Influence by Robert Cialdini. But by this point, you've built a pretty damn solid connection without asking for anything yet. And understand this is a long game as well, right? If you're here to just like get a quick payment from them or get like a quick retweet from someone or a quick share like you may succeed but it's not sustainable you're not building an actual like good network that you can rely on and so at this point you can ask them to join a mastermind group send them one of your posts that you've put a lot of time into because they may share or retweet that right you don't even have to ask them to retweet it they could just share it and the third is ask any specific questions you have for them without paying for consulting right so this is like what a lot of people miss is they'll just shoot a message immediately to someone and expect like a thought out answer when there's no relationship there. And so if you have a burning question that you want answered, then you should practice building a relationship because a lot of the time, I mean, some people do this. I haven't really done it in the past, but <laughs> I know there's some like big, big people where someone will send them a question because they don't take into account how much time like they're busy people. And so the person will send them like a link and be like, Hey, you can sign up for a consulting call here. And it's like a thousand bucks. Right. And so no one's going to pay that. But if you actually network with this person, you show their, that you're a cool person and a real person, then you can usually ask questions and get answers because they like you. And so if your plan is to leverage these people for audience growth, then you need to write a tweet that they would think about retweeting. Right. So you could write a tweet that mentions a topic that you learn from them. You can write a post on Instagram and tag them in it because you inspired a part of that post. And then when you send that to them, you just be like, yo, just wrote this up and thought you'd enjoy it. It was inspired by our previous conversation. And if they're tagged in it, then there's mutual benefit because if they share it and that post gets traction, it just looks better for them anyways. And so for DMs, you should be reaching out to people every single day, right? I'm assuming if you want to become a creator or you're a solopreneur or one person business, you are in the space to not only learn and produce and meet people, but that's exactly it, is you're there to meet people. If you like someone's post, DM them and tell them you like it. If you like someone's reply, like it, engage with it, and just be like, hey man, I love that reply on the post. Like it, it's so easy to just send a DM to thank people for what they're doing online. And so there's a bonus tip, number eight, because you might be thinking, Dan, won't this take a lot of time? It's like, yes, obviously, zoom out and see the big picture. If it's gonna take you four years, 
to get a formal education and the degree, and then another 10 years to actually work your way up the ladder to a reasonable salary that you can live with, then it's going to take a few months, years. It's going to take some time to build your own thing. And all of this is ironic because the uncertain or the uncomfortable path or doing your own thing is the only quick fix out there. And when I say quick, I just mean like an expanded time horizon. It could take you two years to start making 10, 20, $50,000 a month by building your own thing. But then people love the certainty of like, oh, I go to college for four years. I get to take a break. Uh, I get to go and work for this cool, big status based company and then work my way up the ladder from $50,000 a year to $100,000 a year and then get capped there and then eventually start my own thing and maybe spend a few years doing that when you could have just done it from the start. That's why the digital world has no barriers. This is such an important thing. We do not live in the world that we lived in 10 years ago. You live right now and there's ample opportunity to build whatever the fuck you want. And so another thing is bringing your ideal future, the actions you're gonna be taking then anyways into the now is something that you should be doing. If you want to be a writer and you're not writing for 10, 20 minutes, even an hour a day, and then just scaling it up as you are able to make that more sustainable in your life, that's what you do. If you're gonna to have to DM people anyways, when it comes time to start building your own thing, you should be doing it right now. So start with DMing two people a day. You like their content, DM them. Then bump it up to five, bump it up to 10. I promise that alone will just change fucking everything. Because the, the thing with this is, is like, oh, you, like, why, why would I do these things if I'm not being paid for it? Do you, do you see the dissonance there? There's a huge dissonance where it's like, you're not going to be able to get paid for it until you have enough practice from doing it without getting paid in order to get paid. And preferably, it's something you like doing. Like if you're going to be writing every day in the future and getting paid for it, but you're not writing every day right now and working your way up in terms of income, then I, I don't know what you're doing. Like I'm feeling feisty today. So just get your shit together. That's it. So if you like the video, like the video. If you want to comment on the video, comment. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. I'd love if you did that. Uh, check out links in the description for Two Hour Writer. Learn a new skill. Learn how to leverage it. Digital Economics Masterclass on Brand, Content, Marketing, Product. Modern Mastery for a community of like-minded people. You can join for five bucks. Link in the description. Free challenge, creative challenge, free power planner, other cool stuff. Just explore down there. And with that, I hope you have an incredible rest of your day. Day.